Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Scorpio. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Scorpio, I'm doing your reading with a giant stack of blended decks. You'll see a mix of several decks in your spread today. So you've got the giving heart on the split, which I was talking about just being really open and and willing to give freely of yourself, right? Like to, to really show up. And the two of air at the bottom of the deck. There's a reluctancy on your part to show up in a situation that maybe, you know, is really kind of pulling on your heart, but it's like you're feeling perhaps, perhaps it, it's too much, it's too much for you. And so I feel like in a sense, spirit is kind of pushing you to move in that direction, but you are reluctant to do it because it takes bravery with this ace of, ace of um, fire underneath that. It's like, there's something about it maybe that scares you or is intimidating or, um, so you see this two of swords here. It's like, I'm not sure what to do. So spirit swoops in and moves you. Spirit is moving you. Okay. Overall energy from the Lefruma. This whole reading seems to be about um, missing somebody. Missing somebody and almost, it looks to me like almost in denial of how much you miss somebody. Trying to kind of get on with your life or get on with your day and, um, not admitting to yourself how much you miss somebody. So it could be something like showing up, showing up in that for yourself, just like giving that to yourself, that acceptance or that allowance of feeling, feeling that, feeling that absence or feeling that longing perhaps. Okay, overall energy for Scorpio from the Lefruma Healing Oracle. impassioned sap. Okay. So that's the fascinating thing It's talking about passion. And you know, you can say that as well too, but the ace of fire is all about passionate action. Um, so it feels like you are holding back. It's like you're, you're almost afraid to embody th that space, embody the the groundswell of emotions that is tied to this, right? It's talking about the groundswell, uh, groundswell surge that defies the gravitational pull of things. So it's this real kind of tug of war, this push and pull within you. Um, okay, so let's just get into the reading. So, I mean, we're beginning the reading with the Six of Cups, which talks about that, right, Lo uh, longing is longing the right word? It's like a nostalgia. It's a reminiscence that is, uh, it's a, I always describe it as homesick, but I'm not sure if homesick is the right word. Um, it's just like a deep missing with the deep heart coming up next. There's a, okay. What it's looking like to me is that you are go, finding a place in nature to go and be and like meditate and relax or, you know, to gaze deeply into the water, to have a quiet moment. And every time you do that, it brings in this kind of memory of this, there's something in the depths. So anytime, this is fascinating. This happened to me for a long time, actually, where um, every time I looked into my own kind of inner realm or kind of opened to my intuition in a personal way instead of in a professional way, like for the channel, when I did my own stuff, every time I looked at it, an individual would appear that I was trying to kind of cut out of my life or I was trying to cut out of my consciousness. And so I stopped looking for a long time. And so that's what this is talking about. It's like every time you find that stillness space, uh, every time you go within, every time you're silent, this kind of memory or this longing or this missing um, arrives for you. And that's why the Hierophant is here too. It's this, it's this really spiritual focus. Anytime you have a, a heightened spiritual awareness, or you could say just, um, focusing on that, whenever you focus on that, that's what's reflected back to you, right? I mean, you see here, you can see her reflection in the water, right? It actually comes up really clear on camera, almost better than 
when I'm looking at it. Um, but this one here, when she's looking in the water, there's a, that's that's not her that she's seeing there. That's somebody else. That's something else. It's interesting because we were talking about reflections in a reading the other day about the reflection in the mirror, almost like in a sense scaring you. Is it? It's not that it's scaring you actually. With the Five of Cups coming next, it's like there's the. It's almost like okay, there's something about this situation that seems to be impossible, right? I mean, this could be somebody who's passed away and therefore. They're not in your life. There's somebody maybe who's just in, unavailable and therefore they're not in your life. This could be an energy that is not even on the planet and therefore they're not in your life, right? Like, um, you know, star energy, like star family energy or however you want to look at it. It's like something that is impossibly distant from you for whatever reason. And you're trying to be able to figure out how to still embody your spirituality or your spiritual practices, for example, and not fall into this deep state of longing or missing them, right? It's like they're always right there. Um, but at the same time with the two of swords, it's like, but your spirit in a sense or your intuition, your guides, your own inner compass keeps bringing you back to this. And it could actually be a location, something about this eight of cups here. Again, this kind of beachy watery scene that's been coming up in the readings a lot, but these cards too, right? With the looking in the water, it almost feels like you have a place in nature, a specific place that you go. And it could even just be in your own backyard or you have... You have a, like, it's like a sacred site, a, a place that is kind of imbued with an energy that helps you to tap into this spiritual focus, right? So, but it's like every time you go there, it's there they are. And it's like, you're wanting, you're trying to figure out how to kind of like be independent of it. Not because necessary. I want to say that it's not because that you want to forget them or you want to um, separate yourself from them, but because it's impossible, right? It's an impossible situation. So the no strings attached is saying that it's like cutting the cords in a sense, but not because you want to. It's a, it's almost like a, a survival mechanism. It's like, I need to figure out how to separate myself from this in order to be able to, um, kind of get out of this like emotional weightedness. You see what I mean? With the Empress card coming up next so that I can be powerfully embodied and sovereign. I need to be powerfully embodied and sovereign. But this is almost, it's talking a little bit about like putting on a brave face in a sense. It's saying that even if you were successful in kind of cutting this cord or dropping this, dropping this, that it would be untrue. If you embodied this empress, it's like you would just be putting a, a facade up. You'd be acting stronger than you are in a sense. So it must be approached in a different way. There must be another solution, right? Because, okay, because there's something here, I want to say with the communing, commune with nature and the empress, the play off these two energies, that if you kind of... um cut this cord that it turns you into this empress energy which is fine it's a choice but you belong more in this energy and it's more just a visual thing I mean I can try to describe it but it's just more I mean this one's obviously more rigid more like structured less flow less maybe less creativity it's just it's it could be similar. There could be a lot of comparisons. Maybe a lot of other people wouldn't even notice, but I want to say your experience of life will feel different. It will feel more artificial. See what I mean? It's interesting. We were talking about the stand-in energy. It's like you would be a stand-in in your own life in a sense. So it's talking about embracing not just your true nature, but the nature of the situation communing with nature, communing with this situation, it's kind of like, instead of trying to figure out how to almost like survive without them, perhaps there's a way to, well, this is fascinating because of the Empress and the, and the cord cutting card here, if you combine these two energies with this kind of cord wrapping here, combine it with the Empress rather than severing it from the Empress, 
um, it comes into this magician card here. So you see what I'm talking about? It's like that that snake on her is this is this cord being wrapped around. And instead of being this embodiment, it's more of a, uh, an expression, I want to say, of your true nature. There's something about that being disconnected from whatever this is, is unnatural to you. And so it would make you behave in less natural ways for you. So the way to proceed forward in a sense, I feel like this is the guidance here, is to kind of, it's almost like wrap their energy around you rather than trying to figure out how to completely disengage from it. It's like you want to disengage from it because it, because it just makes you sad, right? Because it's an impossible situation and they're at a distance and because they're connected yet at a distance, it makes you sad. But because they're connected, Every time you kind of look into your own heart, in a sense, it's like there they are, right? So instead of kind of um, separating out aspects of your heart, I mean, that's what this giving heart is talking about. Being, being reluctant to be open-hearted because it requires bravery. That's what the message seems to be here. Um, so it requires bravery, perhaps, to... Um, to dive into this situation and wrap their energy around you. It's almost like by working with both of your energies or kind of bringing them into your heart and having it being active, even in their absence, that that is empowering to you in some way, right? And that you can accomplish something, something more, that you can accomplish more. Because it even seems to be an enhancement beyond this Hierophant energy. This seems, because this is more active. Even this Hierophant is a bit stiff and rigid, right? That there's all these rules and structures. Okay, so there's something about that, about that this, this embodiment would be un, unadvisable to conventional spirituality. It's something like that. This is, a, this is the conventional way and this is your way, which is unique to you and it requires kind of embracing and blending with that energy in order to shift things kind of to the next level, I think. It's starting to then talk about like vehicles because it goes into the chariot and the six of swords and I feel like the word vehicle has been coming up in the readings a lot. And if it hasn't been just in the readings, it feels like it's just been hanging around a lot. This idea of your vehicle. I think I was talking about your work as your vehicle. The work, your work is your vehicle to get to that next space. So again, it's really emphasizing vehicles. This is your vehicle maybe to bring this connection in even stronger because you have a farther reach. Perhaps there's something here, like if this is somebody in spirit or if this is a, a you know, like a, a multi-dimensional entity, star family type of a thing, or maybe it's literally just somebody that you're at a distance from, um, but that you just don't have access to, that your vehicle is sh is shifted because of this. Maybe because you're wrapping yourself in that connection. Therefore, I don't know. It's making this the signal stronger. It's making your energy move farther because you're you're upping your chariot energy to the six of swords here, which is just talking about the multi-dimensional, trans-dimensional movement. that your signal is is broadcasting out farther. So I, what I was going to say is if this is somebody that um that that is at a distance from you and part of the reason why you are it's so impossible is because you can't connect with them. But it feels like this may be almost like an attempt to connect. That maybe there is a way to connect. There's also something here about this multidimensional vehicle coming in, whatever that means, the multidimensional upgrade of this energy is kind of like canceling out the chariot. It's like it's cutting its path off. And it's, so, it's something like it's negating your strong impulse to avoid this. It's like to run away. Like you want to just get in your chariot and run away. You want to just get away from this. You want you want to just be free of this 
energy because it's it's heavy for you. But this, maybe it's just because it's kind of like liberating it somehow. It's this air energy. It's lifting it up. It's, it's, it's ungrounding it, for example. But it also just feels like it's stopping. It may, it's like it's satisfying it somehow. It's satisfying you somehow so that you're not feeling this need to go anywhere or maybe even do anything actually. Because I feel like, well, with this card coming up next, it's like this peacefulness comes over you. That's how you know you hit the mark. That's fascinating. That's how you know you hit the mark. It's almost like kind of like sending out a signal, perhaps like multidimensionally through the stars. And you know that it reached its target when your sadness transforms into peacefulness. See what I mean? So you will suddenly be embodying this peacefulness. That's an acknowledgement that you're being effective in whatever it is that you're trying to do here kind of energetically. What's also the, the fact that, I mean, you seem to have gone to this nature spot, this sacred space, in order to find peace, right? But you're showing up there kind of with this homesick energy, this longing. Or, um, but you're leaving in peace. So that means that you were successful. So whatever you did, which I want to say is this, like embracing your true nature or just... Uh, Embracing the nature of this dynamic, not denying it, not trying to cut it off, just kind of allowing it is in a sense kind of freeing you from it. It's freeing you from the need to escape it, right? So you're, you're peaceful. You're peaceful. And then with this home body energy, there's kind of a couple things coming through here. It's talking about kind of like when you're back at home after this, because it does feel like you're traveling. So like you're going out somewhere, like I said, into nature. And then when you come back home, so it doesn't have to be that literally, it could just be talking about that you're out in this altered state or you're outside of your routine when this occurs. But when you come back to your everyday and you settle back into your space, that there, it's like that, that you, first of all, you're feeling much more lively, right? But there's also this with the hand behind the ears, it's almost as if she's listening, right? Paying attention. It's talking about pay attention. Pay attention, but there's also, um, it's got this real French vibe to me today. I don't know why. I mean, maybe that means something to somebody watching. This this house suddenly almost took the shape of the Eiffel Tower. And this the face of this woman just suddenly is coming through as very French. I don't know why. Maybe it's the gloves. It's like, I don't know. It's got this really French vibe. It's almost as if somebody in France has, has picked up your vibration has picked up your message or is suddenly like thinking about you, wondering about you, wanting to connect with you perhaps. And especially if this is somebody who is very much aware of you, you have an entanglement, but for whatever reason you cannot be together. It's an impossible situation. Um, it's like they're having a really happy thought of you. Kind of like you are. Well, because you're connected, right? So if you found peace in this impossible connection, they're feeling it too is basically how it's coming through, right? Like wherever they are in space and time, they're almost like embodying that same peaceful energy. But they, but there's an awareness that it's coming from you because this, they're kind of going like, oh, oh, what's this? What's this? What's this peacefulness? What does this mean? Where is this coming from? You know exactly where it's coming from because you're the one who created it, right? By embracing this. Okay, but then there's something also what we're combining these two cards and maybe this card here that is talking about like the dream space, being at home, being patient, being relaxed, being at peace. Also while having kind of invited in or embodied this more multidimensional vehicle, which so could be talking about your actual physical body is somehow um, energetically shifted by taking in their energy by allowing their energy and not being like protective or, uh, or it could also just be not necessarily being protective or trying to cut that cord, but just kind of feeling their presence, right? You know, like when someone is, is passed on and you're always like, where are they? Where are they? But if you get like really still, and that's the thing, you get really still, you can feel that they're there. And that is, could potentially make you sad because it makes you miss them more in a sense. But there's this like, it's almost like being playful with it. Acknowledging that it's very real, that their energy in your, feeling their energy around you or in your body or in your heart is very real. 
that is that means that they still exist or that the connection is still active for example and having that be something that you like delight in rather than avoiding you see what i mean so maybe because of that you're in this space here with this multi-dimensional vessel which i want to say is maybe your own body your own body is kind of shifted shifted from this more earthbound chariot energy to this more multi-dimensional um, and so therefore it's saying to over the next days or maybe even that very day you can expect that something will occur with the queen of fire coming up next i don't i'm not gonna say this is not that they're appearing at your door but there's something like that you will have like a very real experience of them is how it's coming through. I want to say that it's in dream state, that you will have a dream of them. It would almost be experienced like a visitation is how it's coming through. And because she's got kind of all this wispy kind of energy around her, right? So it's this kind of like multi-dimensional visitation. It's like you've opened the pathway for them to access you or even like to know where you are in a sense. There's something like that. But it's basically like, you reach this peace state, it could be because you're in this peaceful state. It's allowing, right? It's opening your heart. It's um, making your signal very bright. But, okay, however it is that you want to look at it, like from a physics point of view, the point is that um, basically by, by going through this exercise, it's saying, it's kind of saying like, it's not, it's not going to necessarily happen while you're still out in nature still in that sacred space but whatever it is that you're doing in that sacred space is setting exactly the perfect right tone for you that is kind of staying with you and because of that that's why it's almost like in some ordinary state when you're not actually actively focused on it or trying to make it happen they're going to appear right but like I said it feels very much like it's going to be a dream or maybe it'll be a vision in your meditation but it'll be something that's very very real one of those like this dream was more real than reality it's very potent and it's coming as a direct result of you kind of going into these energies it's like you're definitely facilitating this visitation okay so i'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended if you're interested in that link is in the description and if not i will see you next time scorpio thanks bye